Let me start by saying that I think that people with open hearts are just better people. People with open hearts are just better people. Many years ago, I, I went to travel to Synod in uh, Lichtenburg, in the northwest province. Now, I don't know who of you have traveled to, to Lichtenburg, but I can tell you this, that as you, you go from here to Lichtenburg, the closer you get to, to Lichtenburg, as you go through the northwest province, the more open the land becomes. You, you, you go and it's almost as if you can see as far as you can see. <laughs> it is wide open spaces. And traveling through those open spaces stirred something inside of me. It's almost as if the land was saved from something. I couldn't put my finger quite on it at the time. But those open spaces where you could see far and wide stirred something inside of me. Now some people's hearts are like that. Some people's hearts are like that. They live with the same kind of openness. So let me read to you from Scripture about a passage that speaks to us about people living with open hearts. And our reading for today comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, and we're going to read from chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. Luke chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. Luke chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. And let me say there are a lot of names in, this, in these few verses. Um, and we may not get the names quite right. But I'm sure that these people won't mind. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, I think we got that right, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Judea, Herod Tetrach of Galilee, I think that means something like an overseer or a military commander or have some kind of authority, some kind of authority or, or like a provincial governor, something like that. Uh, so there was Herod and there was his brother Philip and there was uh, Licinius. Lysanias. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And so John went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book, of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. Thanks be to God for God's word, even if we have to deal with all those names from, from way back and from a different language. A scripture passage speaking about open hearts. If I understand John correctly, it's almost as if John is saying that open hearts 
make for salvation. If your heart is open enough, you will see salvation. I think that when your heart is open enough, there is space enough for so much. There is space for repentance and for forgiveness. And when you have those two, they lead to all kinds of other things. And in the end, they come to a place where Jesus comes inside or a place of salvation. Open hearts make way for Jesus. And I, when I read this account, I think this is what John helped people with at the time. He helped people to have open hearts so that they could make way for Jesus, so that Jesus too could make his hope in their hearts and so be saved. And of course, this, this invitation from John was to all people, to all. Because in the end, I think that passage is very clear that all people can see salvation. And for John, what would help people to have open hearts are this, repentance and forgiveness. And we'll say a little bit more about them just now. Every Christmas, this text invites us to again prepare ourselves for our salvation by opening our hearts again. Maybe our hearts have grown a, a little bit smaller. And so every year this time, we have an invitation to open our hearts a little bit more. But this preparation is not just every year this time as we prepare for Christmas. It's a lifelong adventure, for it is in preparation for Jesus' coming again as well. For that too, we need to open our hearts again. Perhaps we already have our own open heart stories. I think Christmas is the time for us to, to open our hearts again. It's almost as if we, if I want to say that if we're not going to get it right this time of the year, we will struggle to get it right any other time of the year. I think Christmas kind of invites us <laughs> to to look at our hearts and where our hearts are at. And so this is my open heart story. Up until last year, we, we would put up a, a Christmas tree at home. Now, I wasn't really much involved in that. Um, of course, I enjoyed the activities. I enjoyed watching others putting up the Christmas tree. Um, I know it's hard work, and maybe that, that is why I wasn't so involved. <laughs> um, but then something happened, and I decided that I'm going to, to put up the Christmas tree. And so I went and I bought a little Christmas tree for cheap at the local China shop. Hopefully it will last 
a few years, not just one year. And so I went to buy some other stuff as well, and of course we had some other stuff at home from previous Christmases and so on. And so I put up the Christmas tree last year. And I put it up again this year. But what happened for me was this. While putting it up, busy putting up a little angel on top, or a little star, and a a bell here, and a light there, I suddenly realized how small my heart was, and how much I needed to expand to grow my heart bigger. I discover again a sense of preparing my heart for Jesus to again find a home within me. It's almost as if I was beginning again to open myself up for my salvation. So that's my my preparation story. (laughs) And maybe you too have discovered through something that you've done or encountered how small your heart has grown, has become, and how much you need to again open your heart. And so John's message is really a message for all of us. And I think what John did was to help people to overcome their small hearts, to have bigger hearts, by inviting them to open their hearts through repentance and forgiveness. And I want to say just briefly one or two things about those two things. But the first thing I need to say is simply this, that they always go together. You cannot have repentance, or let me put it this way, it would be very hard to repent if there was no possibility of being forgiven. And there will be no forgiveness. There can't be any forgiveness if there is no repentance. They go together always. Always. When I think about John speaking about repentance, he also says something very important. He speaks about baptism. You may have picked that up when I read that passage. A baptism of repentance. Now, baptism speaks deeply about belonging to the people of God. Through baptism, we become part or a member, we're invited to join the people of God, the body of Christ, the church. So repentance means many things, but the one thing it certainly speaks about is that moment when we turn our back to to other communities we may have belonged to, which may have taken us away from God's will and God's passion, and we become part of this people of God here on earth. Repentance means we now, from now on, walk with God's people. We never walk alone. The only question we must ask ourselves is simply this. Who do we want to walk with? And then forgiveness. 
You know, we can talk about forgiveness the whole day long. But let me sum it up in one sentence. The words of a theologian who wrote this many years ago. Accept that you are accepted. <laughs> That's it. Accept that you are accepted. You are forgiven. God accepts you. Forgiveness means that we accept that we are accepted. And so I think that's what John was speaking about to the people who came to him there at the river. But because John speaks about forgiveness and repentance, he's also speaking about God. As much as that text is about us, it is about God. God has an open heart. Traveling to Sinod so many years ago, uh, and on the road and experiencing the wide open spaces as we were going towards Sinod, something stirred inside of me. It's almost as if I felt at the time a deeper connectedness with God. That's what those open spaces did for me on my way to Sinod. It's almost as if God came closer. And so my experience of my heart being opened, like those open spaces, becoming more like those open spaces, was really matched by God already, God's already open heart, meeting with mine. Yes, we can make God's heart as small as our own, and we do that. But God has an open heart which welcomes us into his people by accepting us. And so for me certainly, John's invitation to people to come to a baptism of repentance and forgiveness speaks about God's open heart welcoming us into God's people through helping us to accept that we are accepted. And so John was saying, if you get that right, if you get that right, then your heart is beginning to prepare to begin to welcome, to begin to be open enough for Jesus to find his home again within. It is Christmas. There are things we can do to help us, to help our hearts to become more open so that we are prepared for Jesus wanting to make his home in our hearts. I want to invite you, if I may connect my own story with yours, to get involved this year helping to decorate your Christmas trees. <laughs> if you're not already doing so, Put up the Christmas tree, even if it's a cheap one from the local china shop. Put up a Christmas tree. Go and buy some stuff, even if it's a little angel or a one light or something. And decorate your Christmas tree this year. But when you do so, let that moment become for you a moment of pre preparation, a moment of perhaps realizing how much more your heart needs to open 
so that it may be big enough for Christ to come in. Participate in getting ready for Christmas this year. And you will be getting ready for Jesus to make his home in you. Friends, open hearts. That is what we must have to have salvation. Open hearts make for salvation. People with open hearts can see wide and far. They can see their salvation. Even if it's over there, they can see it. (laughs) Their hearts are wide and open. Open enough for repentance. Open enough for forgiveness. Open enough to belong to God's people and open enough to accept that we are accepted. Open hearts lead to salvation. For open hearts are big enough to give birth to Jesus inside. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. As we celebrate this Advent season, as we journey towards Bethlehem and that lowly birth in a stable, we are reminded that Jesus will come again, that our lifelong journey is about preparing for his coming. Help us to have open hearts, open enough to want to repent, open enough to search for forgiveness, open enough to be saved. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.